it was said of David, he is the stone that the builders rejected and has now become the cornerstone, chief cornerstone. Praise the Lord. Because of our time, we, we're not going to be reading all these scriptures, but I'm just pointing out to you. Amen. And I've said, I have told you that story many times of Nisiveti, who is the mother of David. Praise the Lord. And David always be in the, in the backyard, taking care of the sheep. The brothers are going to be in the house, lavishing the money, you know, dressing nice, going to party and doing everything that they want to do. David is never included. As a matter of fact, when important things happen in the family, they don't invite David. Praise the Lord. At this occasion, God has sent Samuel to the house of Jesse to go and appoint a replacement king for him over Saul. And Samuel got to the house of Jesse. He said, where are all your children? We have come to uh, make sacrifice. Bring them, let them pass through. And as they were passing through, Samuel was thinking the firstborn will be the one that God will choose. The secondborn, the thirdborn, the fourthborn, the fifthborn, the sixthborn, the seventh. Amen. Praise the Lord. Now, there were nine of them born of Jesse. Nine of them born of Jesse and the same woman, Nisiveti. Praise the Lord. One girl and eight sons. The seven sons came through. And God didn't choose any one of them. And David, uh, Samuel said, is this all your children? Uh, there is one in the back field. Don't worry, we don't have to bother about him. He's, he's not even qualified to be in this kind of setting. And Samuel said, we are not sitting down until he comes. So as, as David came, the mother was behind in the backyard, listening to everything that is going on. She's never been invited because they thought that David's mother had a one night nice stand. Praise the Lord. Now, what happened was Jesse wanted to have a legitimate child by a Hebrew woman so that the lineage, the pure lineage of the Jewish ancestors can follow through. Praise the Lord. The woman, amen, that he married, Nesiveti, is a Moabite woman from like root from a pagan nation. Praise God. That's the bloodline of the severity. Come on, shout hallelujah. God is a God of humor. You would think that everything about the Messiah will come from Jewish people. In fact, when you look at the lineage of Jesus Christ, they are lineage of unbelievers, pagans. Starting from root downward. Come on, shout hallelujah. And so, on the night, they, so they brought the maid, who is a full-blooded Jewish woman, to be married to Jesse so that Jesse can have a child who is full-blooded Jewish. You understand what I'm telling you? Now, on the night of consummation, the maid went to her, um, uh, uh, the, the, her mother, or so to call, and said, how can I do this to you? This is your rightful place. You have born eight children for Jesse. Why will it be me now that will now step in your place and take the bed that belongs to you? So, Ma, tonight my master is asking me to come so that we can have consummation. Let's exchange. You go in there. We will disguise. You go in there. I don't know how they do it at night, but it is that they don't see light. Praise the Lord. So, Nisiveti went into Jesse as always before. Jesse, thinking this is the maid, slept with Nisiveti, and Nisiveti conceived by divine orchestration. That one day became the pregnancy of David. But when they saw the maid not pregnant, and they saw Nisiveti bulging out, noise everywhere that she is an adulterous woman. She has committed wardroom. So they rejected David from the womb. There are children that are rejected from the womb. You know, when some people have one night stand or you have a escapade and become pregnancy, is it that you terminate and you say, okay, let me just carry it, but don't tell anybody. Amen? It's very rampant all over the world. Praise the Lord. Unwanted pregnancies are everywhere. 
And some people keep those unwanted pregnancies, but the spirit of rejection follows those children because those who conceive them in the womb reject their belonging. Or ownership. Some are sent to adoption. Praise the Lord. And you think it's a good thing. Adoption is a good thing for those who have compassion and mercy. And you adopt, oh God. You give them new life, new hope in life. Praise the Lord. I, I cherish and I appreciate people like that. However, you know, those children will struggle with some things. Because at every time, you moms, you know, you know what I'm talking about. That's what we call maternal spirit or instinct. The bonding between the, ma- the baby and the mother in infancy. Praise the Lord. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. And not only that, there is also paternal, paternal uh, 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 you know, bonding that goes with where, um, men. Hear me, hear me, men. When your children are growing up, you have time for everybody else and you don't have time for that young man he will grow up resenting you because you were never there for them. Can I hear amen to that? Spirit of rejection. Spirit subtly can creep in into your children and you will wonder why are they behaving this way? Why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? Because you were in there. You were not there. You have time for everybody else, but you don't have time for them. You say, let them follow their mom. Let them, they are going to church. Let them follow their mom. They're going to this, let them follow their mom. Uh, school, high school problem. Mommy, go and, go and attend to it. And you are never there one time to at least show that, praise the Lord. I was talking to, uh, I don't know where I'm talking. I said, um, <laughs> when my daughter was uh, in high school, some kids were bullying her. When I heard that, I went to the school. And I show up there and I look at that girl. I said, the next time. I'm an African man. I'm not. The the next time you bully my daughter, I'm coming here. I will eat you raw. The the principal and everybody were looking at me. (laughs) Okay, now we have something else in our hand. Praise the Lord. I said, I don't care what the police will do, what anybody will do. You bully my daughter, I will eat you raw. Ask her when you see her. (laughs) Praise the Lord. The point I'm stressing is that your children need to know that you are there even from infancy. David was rejected. Amen? His father didn't want to see him. His brother didn't want to see him. They were calling them for evening sacrifice, like just a little get together. They said, David is not needed. Until God intervened and said, if he doesn't come, we are not sitting down. They brought David and God said, that's the one you are going to anoint. Samuel took the oil to their, to their amazement. Samuel poured oil on David, probably as a teenager. They couldn't but say, <laughs> the, the mother of David said, this is the tomb that the builders rejected, has now become the cornerstone. And then the response that was given was that, it is, this is the day that the Lord has made, it is the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. They have no choice but to concur because this is a servant of God, somewhere well respected. They know it's not going to come and make up anything here. Praise the Lord. You know, that spirit followed David. Do you know? Saul rejected David. Amen? When David got to the battle, they wanted to fight Goliath. God has set David up to defeat Goliath. And he went to his brother. His brother said, what, 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 what are you doing here? See how you are prognosing. You know, some of things, those things happen. Who is talking to you? Shut up. And you keep them quiet. Be, let them talk. You say, how many of us are talking and you are talking? That is very pr- prominent in Africa. If you are in an African family, you are the last one, anybody discussing, you don't open your mouth. They will slap you. Uh-uh. They will say, who is talking? You are talking. How many of, how many of your mates are here? And those things affect so many children. Praise the Lord. Look at America. Amen. Thank God for the little that we see. There are some bad things. But they don't quiet children. 
they just discover that this one has talent to be an astronaut, this one has talent to be this, and the way you talk, and your outgoing, your charisma, they allow you to be who you are. To grow no more. Praise the Lord. You know, it's a, praise the Lord. People like us, when we are growing up, it's koboko. <laughs> wham, wham, wham. You will keep your mouth shut. <laughs> and you don't have confidence when you go outside. To express yourself. You are afraid to stand in front of audience and speak. Thank God that thank God that delivered us. I will not be able to stand in front of you and preach. Praise the Lord. Okay. We've seen biblical examples. Let's look at the signs that tell tell signs that this is a spirit of rejection working in someone. What these men, all these men that I've talked about share in common with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They were afflicted by the spirit of rejection that occurs from the womb and birth. God created us with a desire to be loved and accepted, not, not to fear, praise the Lord, not to live in fear, not to live in self uh, uh, low esteem, but some of those things you know, begin to appear. Amen? In our lives. So number one. Birth and prenatal rejection. Birth and prenatal rejection. Mothers. You know, uh, mothers who are having baby right from the womb. Begin to show you love that baby. Not when he or she is born. Praise the Lord. You can sing to them. Hello? You can do what? Sing. Sing to your baby. They hear you. Even while they are still in the womb. Nurture them. When they now come out, I didn't say spoil them. I said give them motherly love. Praise the Lord. It often begins at a very young age to manifest itself. It may come through causes, being unwanted, tagged illegitimate, abandonment, or a product of rape, but disorder. Because the child didn't grow all the normal things or didn't grow mentally normal, and then you just, anytime you just, you, even when you don't say it when they are there, you just regret having them. Praise the Lord. And sometimes you are tired of looking at them. Instead of devotion and love, letting them know that no matter what, somebody still loves you. Mom, dad loves you. Praise the Lord. Molestation at young age. Mothers, take care. Don't, don't allow the enemy to steal what belongs to you. Jesus Christ said, the thief cometh not but to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I come to give life abundantly. Some of our young children that goes to school or interact with them, they are tampered with. Sometimes you don't know or they don't even have a way to come and tell you. And there are people who are molesting them. Teach them from home. Let them know, don't let nobody touch you here, touch you here, touch you here. If anybody do that, you will make a report to me. You let me know. Praise the Lord. Take care. When you take them to daycare, make sure you uh, vet what daycare they are going. They can be physically abused, spiritually abused, sexually abused, emotionally abused. You have seen so many cases all over the, all over the, praise the Lord. Also sometimes parents may desire, watch this, you desire that, oh, our first baby is going to be a baby boy. And you are dreaming with your husband, baby boy. And you are doing everything, baby boy. And here comes a girl. You say, uh, it's a girl. All your excitement just dials down. You've just introduced spirit of rejection to the baby girl. Praise the Lord. Instead of that excitement, that enthusiasm and say, this is what God has given to us. We welcome and celebrate. I know you still celebrate, but inside of you, yeah, we thought that we would have a boy. Praise the Lord. And you don't know the subtle thing. Now, watch this. I can tell you categorically 
Little children that come to this world, they are like angels. Amen? Now, don't quote me, but that's my spiritual knowledge. We defy in different ways that we see things in the spirit. It's not every one of us that hear ko, pa, pa, of the Holy Ghost. You know, I, I remember somebody sang, say, me, bo, pa, me, bo, bo. I know we are waiting there. Praise the Lord. If you are a child of God, you must be sensitive to the things that the Holy Spirit will tell you. You must be discerning by the Spirit of God. There are some things you do that, are, that have their roots in demonic stronghold. Praise the Lord. Somebody step on your toe. And you, you started all the uh, nonsense. Praise the Lord. We need to be attentive. Amen. Number two. Signs. Generational rejection. Generational rejection. When you see generational, re- generational rejection, it's a pattern. Is what? Look grandma, look grandpa, look children from that generation, look the next generation, look the next generation, you will just see the pattern. You will just see the pattern. You just see the pattern happening. There's a divorce in the third generation, there's a divorce in the fourth generation, in the second generation, there's a divorce in the first generation. It becomes a pattern. And it keeps on repeating itself. Praise the Lord. Am I making sense to you? Parents who experience rejection likely transfer the spirit to their offspring knowingly or knowingly. Amen? So, let's, let's look at uh, uh, Nisiveti and David. And Nisiveti calls David, I say, all oh, those are your brothers. They don't like you. Stay away from them. If I ever see you play with them, if you walk with them, I'll kill you. You just introduce spirit of rejection. So David begins to live in fear of the praise the Lord and begin to see them differently. Even though he doesn't know before, but after you've called and you told him, praise the Lord. You, are not, you didn't recognize that what you're doing is transferring that spirit of rejection to that son or to that daughter. Praise the Lord. Now, watch this. Witchcraft. Are we paying attention? Witchcraft is not this picture of birds flying in the dark. Which is witchcraft? Hello? There are witches in America. They are living in penthouse. Did you hear me? They are not living in the jungle. They are not living in the forest. They are not living in dark places. There are occultic people that are living and doing all those cultish practices. But when you talk about witchcraft, witchcraft is pure manipulating human mind to what you desire them to do. Are you paying attention? Paul the apostle had to address the church in Galatia, chapter 3, verse 1. Amen. He said, Oh foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has what? Bewitched you. Who has set you on witchcraft that you don't obey the truth? God said somewhere to Saul, He said, No, I, have you carried out the instruction of the Lord? He said, yeah, I've carried out, I've done everything, and so on and so forth. I said, but what about the bleating of the sheep? He said, ah, well, the people make me to say we should bring you know, so that we can praise the Lord. If Saul did not give permission for those men to bring the animals, so would they bring it? He's the one who manipulated them. He said, don't worry, God said we should spare some things. I'm taking them home. So he brought them home, and then he was lying. The Samuel said, he to work in is better than what? Sacrifice. To obey is better than to obey. Let's, let's read it. Chapter 15 for Samuel. Because I want you to because Samuel actually used that word. Verse 
But to verse uh, 19. Therefore, mm-hmm. Saul sent messengers to Jesse mm-hmm. and said, First, First Samuel 15, 19. Why then did mm-hmm. you not obey the voice of the Lord? Yes. Why did you swoop down on the spoil? Yes. And do evil in the sight of the Lord? Yes. And Saul said to Samuel, mm-hmm. But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me. Mm-hmm. And brought back Agag, king of Hamalek. Yes. I have heartily destroyed the Hamalekites. Mm-hmm. But the people took up the plunder, yes. sheep, and oxen. Yes. Then best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed. Yes. To sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. See how that manipulative is. To sacrifice to the Lord your God. So it's, not, it's no more his own God. He's somewhere's God. Go ahead. So Samuel said, as the, Lord has, as the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, yes, yes. as in obeying the voice of the Lord, yes. behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, mm-hmm. and to heed than the fat of rams. Yes. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Stop there. For what? <laughs> rebellion is exactly like the sin of witchcraft. So when we're talking about witchcraft, it's not this black ball that they throw, they throw at you in the picture and say, that, that, those are witches, they are flying into your house. And, and, and sometimes the enemy use those things to terrorize you, to terrorize your mindset, thinking that there's one dark, uh, something that is coming to, to live in your house. Amen? But... One who manipulates your mind to believe error, to believe wrong thing, to do wrong thing, to do certain things that are not wise to do. That's witchcraft. And so when we say, excuse my word, when we say in Nigeria, it's not because of be give him charm to drink. Praise the Lord. All the wickedness that the generation before knows how to do, it transfer it. They transfer it. Praise the Lord. And so the thought, the mind, is completely messed up. You will take as enemy to people you shouldn't take as enemy. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about generation re- rejection. So telling your children about what other did wrongly to you is a legal ground you created for that child to see people as enemies and they become insecure, isolated from perceived injury. Praise the Lord. Now, when I'm preparing this, I read a book by John Eckhart, Uprooting the Spirit of Rejection. And some of these facts are picked up from there. Amen? That is my research. Those are experts in dealing with demons. Hallelujah. Now, the third one is relational rejection. Relational rejection. And you know, for our young people that are coming to the level of adolescence, and one of the things that is very prominent for young people that are growing up and they are coming to age 11, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, what do you think is the major thing? It's relationship, boyfriend, girlfriend. And at that age, they are thinking, oh, he lost me. They don't, they don't understand any clue about what love means. But they are just, you know, thinking that, oh, that, that's my boyfriend. And you, you parents are saying, at your age, you have a boyfriend? Praise the Lord. I say, yes, he loved me. And they are writing, you know, texting and so on and so forth. They don't have clue about what love is. Now, as they are growing up, and this young man, they call my boyfriend went to be another, with another girl. Praise the Lord. Then she comes home, and you see her sitting down in the corner of her room, not talking to you, not saying anything. I say, honey, are you okay? You back from school? And I say, yes, mom. I say, ah, ah, what's going on? And you will ask questions, ask questions, ask questions. She will be deflecting. 
Now, at the core of it, she is disappointed about something. And if you go down deep, it's about one boy who says, I don't want you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The spirit of rejection comes through relational. Not even those young children that you need to pay attention to them. Even those who have grown up to a manageable age. And these guys came and said, ah, I am the Jesus. I am the Messiah. And the Messiah just turned out to be something else. Praise the Lord. Broken heart. Amen. And that sticks. The next person that will come to her, she will be very guarded. She doesn't want to hear what you are going to say. Amen. Amen. And then when it comes to those who have even been married for many times and the guy walk away from you, praise the Lord, the next person that show up at your door, you will look at that person and say, you, that I know your type, and because you have not been totally delivered and debriefed, all the garbage you are carrying from that divorce marriage, you are going to put it on that guy. Before he says something, I know your type. That's the way the person do. You always refer to the previous marriage relationship. Praise the Lord. Rejection. So it, it happens in relational uh, setting. Praise the Lord.